Hey guys, Jill Karen from Two Dogs Media. What I want to do today is take you through the search results section on, in Google Search Console so you have an understanding of how to use this tool to improve your website. So what we're going to cover, if you're not installed, if you don't have Google Search Console installed with your website, that's the first thing you're going to need to do so you can start collecting the data. There is a link in the blog post um, that should take you to a tutorial to help you install it. If you have trouble, just let us know. We'll be glad to help you for a small fee. You can add multiple websites to the Search Console, so if you own several properties, they'll all fall under the same account. You just choose the uh, website that you want to review, click Search Results, and then this is the page that you're shown. Okay. This is search type web, that is what you're shown by default, but if you're optimizing for image or videos, you can choose to review that data instead of your web pages. There's also compare, so you can see how your web pages are doing versus your image, or your images versus your video, or however you want to manipulate the data. For this, we're just going to leave it at search type web. Then you can also do date filters, so it gives you all of these options, you can set custom dates. It's important to note that Search Console does only store up to 16 months of data, so if you do want to keep your data, you're going to have to export it so you have it for the future. And you can also compare your data as well. So you can compare you know, last three months to the previous three months, or the last three months to the previous year. You can also set custom dates as well. We're just going to leave it to the default, which is three months. And then there's also other filter options as well. If you want to look for a specific page to look at the data for one page, you can choose that. Uh, we're going to leave this for now. This will be populated later um, as we go through the tutorial. Then by default, total clicks is checked and total impressions are checked. You can see the line graph data helping you understand how well you're doing or how well you're not doing. And then that data is also shown down here, clicks and impressions. We're going to go ahead and click these other two options as well. So now you can see clicks, impressions, click-through rate, and average position. Okay, and that's all coming from these. Okay, so these are actually, you know, kind of secondary filters, so you can decide what's more important to you. Right now, we're just going to keep everything clicked. If you look at the graph, everything's pretty stable. Um, obviously, we want to see the purple going down, and it is a little bit. Our average position is improving overall. And we'd like to see all the other stuff going up, but this is our own website, and we don't spend consistent time um, working on SEO for it. We just don't have the time. So overall, you know, we're happy with where we are. We're staying stable and that's all that matters to us right now. Okay, so once you come down here, you have queries, pages, countries, devices, and search appearance. We're not going to cover search appearance today. Um, it's not relevant to what I wanted to talk about. I'll do that in a future video. Queries, this is all the keywords that you rank for. You can increase the amount of pages you want to see, or you can just scroll through this way. Okay. Pages are the pages of your website that actually have keywords ranking for them. So these are some of our pages that have keywords ranking. Countries are the countries that are sending you traffic, and of course we're US-based, so we would want to see US be at the top of this list by a large margin, and it is. Devices are how people are getting or what devices people are using to access your website. And some of you might be surprised how much desktop we get versus mobile. Everybody keeps talking mobile, mobile, mobile. A large portion of our traffic has always been and probably always will be desktop. Um, business to business, we see a lot more desktop traffic than we do for bloggers who may be more mobile. So it's important that you're really optimizing your site for the traffic that you're getting. So this is a really useful piece of information here. So typically what we do, uh, let me ch talk about these for a few minutes. You'll see these really weird looking green boxes and then a star and the red barrel. These are not going to be in your search console by default. These are coming from a tool um, or an add-on for Chrome. It's called Keywords Everywhere. And if you don't have it installed, I highly recommend it because it'll be really helpful for you to um, kind of review and analyze your data in this tool. Um, it also shows up in other places on the web, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but what this does, Keywords Everywhere pulls in data from the Google AdWords. So basically, Google, it's telling you um, how much people are bidding on a certain term, um, how much competition there is for that term when it comes to bidding, and approximately how much volume that search term has. So for example, meta description example, it gets about 2,400 searches a month. I guess there are people that might be doing ads for it at some point, but the cost per click is 98 cents with very low competition, which I would expect because this isn't a term that normally people would really want to bid on. So 
this is just really useful. I highly recommend you install it. Um, so what we're going to do, I usually start analyzing my data by going to pages. And then I'll kind of look and see, like my click-through rates are kind of low for the most part for my pages. We're just going to address this one today. What is meta description? Okay, I had 6,000 clicks to my site for this URL in the last three months with about 250,000 impressions. My click-through rate is about 2.7. And my position is 21, uh, 27. This is an average for the last three months, guys. This is not exact data. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. And then you can see that's the only page showing. And now I want to see the keywords I'm ranking for for this post. Now, notice up here when I said before about an, uh, another filter. Okay, now it's telling me I'm filtering for this specific URL. So any data that shows below is going to be just for this URL. Okay. Now you'll notice the volume, cost per click, and things are missing. I'm just going to refresh the page real quick to bring those back. It's just a little glitch, I think, with keywords everywhere. Um, so I just do a quick refresh and it shows up. So now we have all of our data. I'm actually going to show more rows per page just so I can see. And what I would do from here is I kind of go through and I see where there's high volume terms that might have some low click-through rates. So one of the main terms for this post is meta description example. The volume for that term is about 2,400 searches a month. And you can see I have about a 23% click rate at almost position two. Again, this is an average. It's not an exact. Um, if I go check right now, I might be at position three. So this is a guide. Um, it's not meant to be an exact. If you want to know your exact position, you'll have to invest in a rank tracker um, to really show you exactly where you are. But back to this. So if I have a 2400, I'm at 23% click-through rate. I might be okay with that. I don't know that I would touch it. So I'm just going to keep going through a little bit. Meta description examples, volumes 550. I got about a 24% and I'm at position two. Meta examples. Yeah, my Position here is um, four, and it looks like I got about a 4% click-through rate. This might be one I want to look at, um, but this post is specifically about meta description examples, and this is meta examples, so it's a little more broad. Um, when I focus on SEO for my posts, I really try to fine-tune what the post is about, and I optimize for really what we call um, like low-hanging fruit terms, terms that are less competitive. Meta examples might be a little more broad um, than I'd want because I want people to get to my post for exactly what I'm talking about, and that's meta descriptions. So I don't know if I would focus on that one too much. And here's another example. Description example gets about 6,600 searches a month. Okay, I do rank at position 5, but my click-through rank is horrible. Okay, so what this is telling me, this isn't a term I want to worry about, even though you're probably thinking, oh my god, 6,000 searches a month, you should better optimize for that, for click-through. But this description example is really broad. It might not even be relevant to meta descriptions at all. I wouldn't even waste my time on it. Um, it just doesn't make sense for me to invest in trying to optimize for something that I'm not completely sure that it's what people are even looking for. So I would just bypass that one. So that's how I do this. I kind of just go through the list, see where I'm missing some opportunities. Okay. So here, let's take a look at this one. What is meta description? Okay, I have an estimated search volume of 2,900, which is really, really strong. But my click-through rate is only 0.7%, and it's telling me I'm at 7.8%. Um, for position. So this one is really interesting to me and I would really want to see, okay, what do I need to do here? So the first thing I would do is I would take this, go to Google, which I already entered this just to speed things up, okay, what is meta description? Okay. If I scroll down, it told me I was at about position 8 and I am, I'm at position 9, okay, but my click-through rate is only 0.7%, so I need to figure out why, okay. This right here might be the reason, okay? What's a meta description? And it's giving them that data right from the search engines. There's no reason for them to go anywhere else. They now know what a meta description is, okay? But even that, before my result, you can see there's about three or four other results that are giving them what they want. So what I might wanna do for this post is figure out how I can further optimize it because being at 7.8, 
if that's that weird place where, you know, a lot of people might not be scrolling down to. So my goal with this would maybe to just make sure I'm using enough of this term in the content of the post. Make sure I'm well optimized. Make sure I'm not over optimized. Um, see if I can get a couple backlinks to this post to push it maybe a couple spots higher. So at least I could bring this up to maybe a five, six percent. Um, so this is definitely a keyword I would definitely want to take and rework into my post to see if I could rank higher. Um, this is a great opportunity that I'm missing um, because I'm not ranking high enough and I'm not getting the click-through rates. So that's a perfect example of how you can use this tool to, to better optimize and better work your content. And same thing here. Um, it says meta description, okay, which is kind of broad. Um, so this is a tough one. It's a tough one to um, optimize for because it's a very competitive. It's got 27,000 search results. I'm hanging down at 24 on average right now. So Obviously, I need to do a better job of optimizing for meta description. So this, again, this is another one. It's a fantastic low-lying fruit where I'm hovering on page two or page three. I need to improve this so I can grab more of that traffic. Okay, so these are just two examples of how I use this tool. I want to show you one other um, thing. So I did a sort by query because there's a specific term I'm looking for. Now... The positions in Google Search Console are not exact positions. They are position based over a period of time, and they're positions that could be based on a variety of things, from carousels to um, snippets to actual listings to images to videos. So there's so many different places that you're showing up that are all lumped into this position. And that's why I'm trying to explain, you know, you could be seeing your position at number one for something, um, and you might not see it when you're in your search results, but maybe somebody else is. But I just wanted to show you one example that I found. This is just a good example. So I have photo description example. Okay, it's got 170 searches a month. And it's telling me I'm at number one, which is weird because I haven't really ever optimized for photo description example. So I found it hard to believe that I would be at number one for that. So when I did the search photo description example, okay, you can see I'm nowhere to be found. Slide share, scribe, learn English teens, ego for you. I mean, I'm nowhere to be found. Okay, but what I did realize when I went to images, I'm at number one for images. Okay, that's me right there. So this is interesting because you know you're gonna look at this and be like, okay, how can I be at number one for something? And not be getting any click-throughs. Like that should be a really big red flag for you guys. If you're at number one and you're not getting any click-throughs, something's clearly wrong. So when I looked at that, nobody's looking up images for photo description example. They're not going to go to the image tab for that. It's just not something that would be an image search item. So you have to really use this data, you know, in a really holistic way and really evaluate all of the data that's being given to you. So this is how I use it. Um, you can go through all your different pages. If you want to try a new page, you can close this out. But if you go to queries, okay, another great way, okay, you can click, you can sort by any of these items. So if you want to see what your best term is for click-through rate, okay. So this is interesting because Envato Torrents, we don't even talk about this on the website. I do talk about Theme Forest, but not Envato. And it's telling me I'm at position 17, and I did check, and I am at not at position 17, but it's telling me I have 100% click-through rate, which is interesting because I don't have any articles talking about it. So if I want to see what's going on, I can actually click on this. Okay, so what this probably is, okay, you can see I was at position 8 back in March, okay, and I was in position 27 back in early March, okay. What this could very well be what Google sometimes does, it will take one of your pages and it will throw it into the search results and it will test it and it will see how it does. Um, and it's a way for them to understand whether or not it's a page that people would want to see. So Google may very well have just said, okay, let's throw this out there. But if I want to see what page was put out there for Envato Torrents, even though I don't talk about those, I can click pages while I'm on that term. Okay, so it's telling me my theme forest themes review page is the one that 
they ranked for Envato Torrent. And the reason why I probably don't rank at all anymore, because you can see here I don't rank at all anymore, is because I don't even talk about torrents. So torrents is when you download things illegally. I would never even talk about that because I don't want people doing that. It's not fair to the creators. Um, so they probably realized, okay, this is just not, even though I got the click-through rate, what probably happened is people got to my page and they're like, oh my God, this isn't what I want. And they bounced right off. And that's what I'm thinking. It happened twice and Google's like, all right, this page is totally irrelevant. So that is another great way to use this. So what I would do here, okay, you can look any way you want. You can check by click-through rate, see what's really working for you. You can check by impressions to see what's getting out there the most. You can check by clicks or you can check by position. I would check um, with position. You can start going through. And again, same thing. See if there's anything you're at position one for where you're getting no click-throughs. So right now, all my click-throughs for position one seem to be pretty fine. Um, this one's at 1% website. Oil. So this would be a big concern for me because this is what I do. So here I have a term, website auditing service, gets about 260 searches a month. And look at that cost per click. That means people are paying almost $14 a click to advertise this term so that they can get people to sign up for their website auditing services. And you can see my position, they say, is at 1.2, but I only got a 1% click-through rate. So let's look at this real quick. Website auditing service. I'm going to put this into the search. I'm going to go to the web page. Let's see where I'm actually showing up. Okay, I'm showing up at number two. So it is showing me in the right correction. So this is a big concern for me, and I need to figure out what's going on. Um, I'm at 1.2 with a 1% conversion rate with about 260 searches. So what I would want to do here, I would want to see what I can do to capture more of these people. Okay, website auditing service. And even though I have website audit and analysis services, this is my website SEO audit services page. Maybe I'll try a different title tag. Maybe I'll try to improve my meta description. Maybe I'll put an offer in here, um, you know, special now, $500 or whatever I decide to do. But maybe I can try and entice them to click through by adding a price or a, you know, try now or something. Um, so this is definitely a really good find right now. So these are the kind of things that you want to look for when you're using the search console. There's a lot of fantastic information in here. If you guys have any questions, let me know and thanks for coming by. Have a great day.